Hey coders and welcome to episode 4 of our utility service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this episode we're going to be talking about zip files. So before we can understand what zip and gzip files are and how they work, we're first going to need to learn the differences between archiving and compression. So I've illustrated archiving on the left hand side of the screen. Basically how this works is you will take one or more files of the same or different type and then you'll combine them and store them in one large mega file. And this one large mega file has the same file size as the sum of the original files. And you can think of this kind of like as a folder, how a folder would work on your own laptop. So let's say that you had some files that you wanted to group together and store together. Then you would drag and drop those those fo those files into a single folder and then if you ever want to access those files again individually then all you would need to do is just open up that folder and then you would have all those files displayed in front of you. Now compression I have illustrated on the right hand side of the screen. With compression you'll take a single file, only one file, and then you will minimize its file size as much as possible without losing any of the original data. So how does that work? Well compression algorithms can be quite complex but as an example let's say that you have a text file and you have the word supercalifragilisticexpialidocious in that text file 100 times. Well instead of just writing that word, that very very long word 100 times in that text file, what you could do is write uh, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious equals this symbol, the asterisk symbol, and then everywhere where you see that word uh, in the text file, just replace that word with an asterisk symbol, and that will reduce your file size by a large, large amount. And then when you go to uncompress it, you'll see that instruction at the top of your file where it says asterisk equals supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, and then all you need to do is replace those asterisks with that very, very large word, and then you'll have uncompressed it. So I found this really awesome quote on linuxjournal.com that describes a little bit more of the differences between archiving and compressing and I've displayed it at the bottom of the slide right here so let me just read that for you right now. It says archiving means that you take 10 and it doesn't have to be 10 it can be any number of files and combine them into one file with no difference in size. If you start with 10 100 kilobyte files and archive them the resulting single file is 10 times 100 or 1000 kilobytes. On the other hand, if you compress those 10 files, you might find that the resulting files range from only a few kilobytes to close to the original size of 100 kilobytes, depending upon the original file type. So how does this relate to zip and gzip? Well, gzip is a compression algorithm. If you want to compress a single file, use gzip. Zip, on the other hand, will not only compress files, but it will also archive them. And this is really cool because now you can hand to the zip function a lot of functions, you can, or a lot of files. You can, you can hand 10, you can hand 20, you can hand a lot of different files to the zip file. It will compress every single one of them, and then it will archive all of those compressed files in a single zip file. And that might get you asking the question, well, well then why would I ever want to use gzip if, if, if zip can both compress and archive and gzip can only compress, then why would I ever use gzip? Well, I've heard that gzip is, has a slightly better compression algorithm and in my own work I have found that to be the case as well. It will compress files into a slightly smaller file size. But again, it doesn't get that added advantage of being able to archive multiple files. So if I only want to compress a single file, I'll use gzip. If I want to compress multiple files and then store them in a single archive, then I'll use zip. So the top four methods that I have picked out for you today are zip, gzip, unzip, and ungzip. And before we proceed into the code, I want you to take a look at the arguments for the zip and gzip method. As you can see with gzip, it's just a single blob singular. And that is because, again, gzip does not have the functionality to archive. So you have to go one file at a time with gzip. Whereas with zip, you can hand it as many files as you want, or as many blobs, plural, as you want. It'll compress them all, and then it will archive them in a single zip file. 
All right, that's enough talk for right now. Let's jump on over into the code and have some fun with these methods. For this demonstration, let's imagine that you are a hiring manager working for the human resources department at a local company. And your job as an HM is not only to interview these oncoming candidates, but also to make that crucial decision whether or not you're going to extend an offer for a position at your company. So to help assist you in making this decision, you've decided to utilize the Google Cloud Natural Language Processing Service. So because of COVID, all of your interviews are now virtual. So let's go into our Gmail. You've decided to have all of your inter interviews on Google Hangouts, actually. And from this date, we can see that we had two interviews. Here they are right here. It has all been documented and recorded on Google Hangouts. But because this is somewhat insecure, you decided to now document all of this on your Google Drive so that it's not just all hanging out on one person's uh, Google Hangouts or one person's Gmail right here. So that is what you want to do first. You want to document these conversations onto your Google Drive. So that is what this function is intending to do, document interview. You're going to get your chat threads through the Gmail app uh, parent class right here. You're going to loop through those threads. You're going to get the messages from them. And then you're going to add those messages. You're going to concatenate those messages onto a variable called transcript. With that variable, you're then going to create a new blob and you're going to convert that string into a blob. It's going to be of type plain text. And then with that blob, you're going to create a new file onto your drive, your Google Drive, using the Google Drive app right here. So let's just do that right now. Let's run this function. And execution has started, it is now running, it has completed, so let's go check out our Google Drive. And there we go, right here, we have a new folder created for us on the day of the interview, right there, that's what's titled, and here are our two interview transcripts right there in a .txt file format. Right here, we'll take a look at it, and yep, it is plain text indeed for both files, for both interviews. All right, so if we look down here, we can see that the file size is around 1.8 kilobytes. But as a hiring manager, I mean, that's not, too, that's not too large, but as a hiring manager, you're trying to forecast that you'll have hundreds of interviews and you'll have hundreds of days every year that you're going to have interviews. And you also look down here and you, you also see that you only have 15 gigabytes of free space. So this is going to add up very quickly and it's going to eat away at your free storage. And you do not want to click this dreaded buy storage button right here. So you need a way to shrink these files. You need a way to compress these files. Well, you just learned that you can compress files by either converting them into zip files or gzip files. But which one is better? Well, let's go test that out right now. So instead of just creating a file using the blob, the dot, the .txt file right here, you decide to compress this blob before creating the new file. So you're going to now try both compression algorithms. You're going to try the zip and you're going to try gzip. So if you look at the methods required or the parameters required for zip, you can see that this zip function requires an array of blobs. And if you remember, that is because you can, you can add as many files as you want it to be zipped, right? Because zipping also has the functionality of archiving your files. So we only have one file for right now, but that's okay. We'll just include it in a one element long array. And then we'll also include this optional parameter name. So we're gonna give our zip file a name. And this is a pretty good name. I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to paste it right here. Instead of calling .txt though, I'm gonna be calling it .zip. So this is the file extension for all zip files. It's .zip. And this again is going to now compress this string and it's going to archive it in a .zip file right there. All right, let me copy this and paste it right here. And let me rerun this one. And while it's running, I'm actually going to now start working on the gzip. So with gzip, it just requires a blob source. That's because you can only go one file at a time. So I'm gonna remove now this array 
and I'm also going to change the file extension from .zip to .gz. So .gz is the file extension for gzip files. Let me just change that one too for clarity. All right, and now I'll hit the run button one last time. Here we go, execution has started and it's running and now it is completed. So let's go check out our Google Drive to see which compression algorithm is better. So again, here is the .txt file, the .txt, it was 1.8. Now let's go check out our .zip file and here it is right here. As we can see, our, our compression algorithm worked because it's only 1.2 kilobytes now, which is a near 33% reduction in size but if we look at our .gz file, it's now 1,000 bytes or one kilobyte, which is very, very close to a 50% reduction in size, which is pretty incredible considering how long this text file is right here. That is pretty small and we're already shedding 50% of the total file size just by converting it into a .gz file. So that is pretty dang cool and it is smaller than the .zip file size so we're just going to use the .gz uh, the, the .g, or the .gzip files from now on. So let me just remove this one and these two as well. And now we have two compressed interview transcripts within our Google Drive. So now that we have the compressed version of the transcript, what do we want to do? Well, we want to actually process that sentiment, right? We want to take those transcripts and run it through our natural language processing uh, our service that Google uh, Cloud provides and get a score to see how well the sentiment is, right? So we're going to use the endpoint analyze sentiment using our language processing, our natural language processing service. So here we go. So we're, we're going to get our drive app, we're going to get our folders, or the interview transcripts and then we're going to get all of the interview transcripts from this date which is exactly what we have up here but we can't just loop through these files right we can't just after getting the files we can't just loop through these files because they're all compressed right if we try to pass in the the file and get the data as string and then pass that it's just going to be a bunch of gobbledygook it's not going to be readable text right we need a way to uncompress now our gzip file and the method to do that is actually very, very simple. All it is is utilities.ungzip. It's as simple as that. And that what that will do is it will take a blob. It's going to take this file right here, which is a .gz, and it's going to now uncompress the gzip using the gzip algorithm. All right, so now that we have it uncompressed, we can get the data as a string. That's going to be human readable text and then we're going to pass that into these parameters right here uh, and then we're going to pass that into a payload for our post request to this rest api endpoint right here and what that's going to do is it's going to give us the results from the natural language processing service so after we have those results what do we want to do well uh, we would like to actually document those as well just so that we know um, those results and we have everything documented. So we're going to take these results and we are going to uh, create a file. But the way that we create a file this way is going to be a little bit different. We're not going to actually create individual files within a folder of, of all the interviews that happened during this date. We actually want to create one single file of the, all of the results that happened on this date. So how are we going to do that? Well, that is a perfect job for .zip. That's a perfect job for a zip folder. So after we have uh, processed all of our results, we want to collect all those results into an array called results, and then we want to create a zip folder creating or it has all of those results in it. So all we need to do is say utilities.zip. Again, zip takes an array of blobs and that's exactly what's in our variable results. And we're also going to give it the name of interview date. So this is going to be now the name of our zip file interview date. It's going to have all of the results and we're going to zip it up. We're going to compress it all and then archive it into a zip folder and then put that on our Google Drive. So let me now just run that function. Execution has started. It's running. Execution has completed. 
And there we go. If we look now into our sentiment analysis, here is our single zip file of all of the results from this day right here. And as we can see, we have two compressed files in our one zip file. Awesome. So this is a pretty cool, but we actually want to see the results now. So let's go into our uh, code editor again. And here we go. We have log sentiments. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to get that zip file and we're going to and we're going to read the results that we got from this uh, from this Google Cloud natural language processing service right here. So before we can actually read those results, get data as string, we need to unzip now the file. And to do that, it's very simple. Once we get our files, we're going to call next on it and we're going to say utilities dot unzip. These are all very uh, straightforward and intuitive names right here. So we're going to unzip our zip file and then we're going to loop through all of those files and then we're going to get the data as a string. We're going to console log it. All right, now let's log these statements. We'll hit run. And there we go, execution has started. And wow, that was a lot of text right here, but let's go and see if we can make any sense of it. So here we go. This is the first document, which if we go back into our into our Google Drive, we can see that this right here was for uh, Weiss DAV. I know this. So this is a score of 0.04. So what this basically means is I'm not going to get into too heavily what this means, but these scores run from negative one to one and negative one is like negative sentiment and one is positive sentiment. So this was a pretty uh, good score for an overall score. And then this service as well, this natural language processing goes sentence by sentence. So we can see like some of these sentence, I am good. Thank you. Received a score, a really good score of 0.9. This one was pretty neutral, how about yourself? That's no problem at all, 0 0.9 again, that's pretty good. Yes please was 0 0.6, okay. So all of this, if you average the entire document together, would get a score of 0 0.4. So that's a pretty good rating for this interviewee, or this, this candidate right here. If we go look at our other candidate, we can see that they received a negative 0 0.4, which isn't that good. It's kind of like the opposite actually of this candidate. And they, they received this bad score because they made some pretty negative statements like it was near atrocious, I woke up late and didn't have time for a shower, that's also a pretty negative statement, and, and all of these other very bad statements. So you may not want to accept this candidate because they got a bad score, but this one looks pretty good right here because they received a positive score. All right guys, we're going to be getting, we're going to be delving into this service in a later playlist. But for now, that is zip, gzip, unzip, and ungzip. I hope you guys learned something. I hope this wasn't too long as well. Um, you can always replay it if, if I skipped over some things. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the very next episode.